What's up guys, it's your boy Yarakov, and today we're going to be doing a genetic and phenotypical analysis of the Proto-Indo-Europeans. The Proto-Indo-Europeans were, be were people who spread the Proto-Indo-European languages, such as English, Hindi, Persian, Greek, Italian, Spanish, as well as many more, as you can see on the map, and all around the globe. In order to understand who these people were, we have to look back into their ancestry. The ancient North Eurasians, an early West Eurasian population that migrated to Siberia and mixed with uh, Proto-East Eurasian people. They were about one-fourth to one-third East Eurasian, with the leftover ancestry being early West Eurasian, as you can see here, I put some models. So West Eurasian encompasses a large group of people, which includes Europeans, North Africans, West Asians, South Asians, um, South Central Asians, and the Caucasoid, Indo-Aryan, and Iranic Central Asians. East Eurasian encompasses also a large group of people, such as uh, indigenous Siberians or Northeast Asians, East Asians, Southeast Asians, um, Australian Aboriginals, Andamanese people, Melanesians, and other related peoples. The ancient North Eurasians were uh, people who mostly had a West Eurasian type of face with darker features. And many of them also would have had these Asiatic features because of this... Uh, partly uh, East Eurasian ancestry. Um, they were also described as having Amerindian or Native American facial features, as you can see here. These uh, people look sort of Native American. And they're a common ancestor to all West Eurasian populations, Siberians, as well as Amerindians. Some ancient North Eurasians, or any for short, migrated west into Eastern Europe, and they mixed with the local European population called Western Hunter Gatherers, or WSG for short. This mix of two thirds to three fourths ancient North Eurasian plus uh, one fourth to one third Western Hunter Gatherer created these Eastern Hunter Gatherers, or EHG for short. Now, as you can see here, these are, their, these are uh, some reconstructions. This guy looks pretty Amerindian. This guy looks pretty West Eurasian, but with uh, darker features. And these two look uh, Eurasian due to this partly uh, East Eurasian ancestry that the ancient North Eurasians carried, as well as the, as the East Eurasian gene SMP called EDAR, which uh, carried over into some of these Eastern hunter-gatherers. Some of these um, Eastern hunter-gatherers migrated down to the Ponte Caspian steppe, which is western Kazakhstan, Ukraine, a part of southern Russia, and a very, very tiny bit of the northeast Balkans. So these ESG migrated down, and they mixed uh, with a uh, Caucasus hunter-gatherer, or CHD, women. Now, the reason we know that it was men, HD men, who uh, went down into this is because of the presence of R and I, uh, Y DNA haplogroups. So Y is paternal, while mtDNA or is uh, maternal. So we see these maternal haplogroups H and U, but the specific U variants acquired from the CHG were not from, but were not from the ancient North Eurasians, as we saw on some slide before. And these Western steppe herders. I uh, spoke to predecessors to Indo-European. So here I modeled the Western steppe herder here. I here, uh, used the sample of Khvalinsk in Neolithic. And you can see they were mostly Eastern hunter-gatherer with some Caucasian hunter-gatherer. And Zagrosian is genetically pretty much the same as Caucasian hunter-gatherer. They're often grouped together. And here you can also see Amerindian and Siberian hunter-gatherer. And the reason is it shows the genetic affinities that these uh, Khvalinsk or Western steppe herders had to the ancient North Eurasians from this Eastern hunter-gatherer ancestry. So it was a mix of EHG and Caucasus hunter gather women. And these are what they look like. Here you can see this guy looks sort of Eurasian, while this guy looks more uh, West Asian. So some of these Western hunter gatherers went uh, and mixed a bit more with the CHG women, and they had slight influence from a population that was mostly of uh, Anatolian Neolithic farmer origin, called the Kukuteni Tropelia culture, which was majority ANF or Anatolian Neolithic farmer, which is a population that originated around here. And they spread uh, throughout Europe from Anatolia and the Balkans, and they replaced the majority of the Western hunter gatherers. Um, so you can see they're mostly A and F with a bit of WSG and EHG with a very tiny bit of Western steppe herder ancestry. And from this mix, the Yamnaya culture was born, and the Yamnaya uh, people gave birth to the Armenian, extinct Anatolian, and Greek language families. An eastern variant of the Yamnaya culture called the Afanasievo uh, culture emerged in Central Asia and they developed into the extinct Ocharian people as well as the speakers. Now, a very uh, big misconception with the Yamnaya and Proto Indo Europeans in general is that they were a light people because very few of them carried uh, blonde hair and blue eyed genes from these ancient North Eurasians, 
when they when none of them really had actually blonde hair and blue eyes just because you have the genes for it genes for it doesn't mean that you will have it and from actual genome sequencing and a few typical analysis from more uh, educated people with more uh, higher up programs you, we can see that they really were dark they were dark people as you can see here some look uh, Amerindian like here too somewhat Eurasian and some look more Western Eurasian with just darker features so you can see here a model of the Yamnaya with a Khvalinsky Neolithic and you can see here that they have an increased amount of uh, Caucasian hunter gatherer ancestry with a tiny bit of ANF from that Tarpelia culture and here's um, a phenotype um, called Corded Norded which is the average of what the Yamnaya would have looked like and you can see here uh, relative to the Khvalinsk or Western Step herder culture people, uh, the Yamnai had more affinities to Caucasian hunter gatherers as well as Anatolian Neolithic farmers, while the Khwarians had more affinities towards Eastern hunter gatherers and West in uh, these uh, Siberian peoples as well as some other Western hunter gatherer uh, derived as well as EHG derived uh, populations of Europe. The Kordowe were another people that were uh, the proto neo Europeans, but they're not the same as the Yamnaya. That's another big misconception. That the Kordowe were derived from the Yamnaya or they were descended from them when in fact they weren't. They were just related to them. And these Western Sep uh, herders expanded west, intermingling with the early European farmer population called Fundal Beakers and Globulin Fora people. And they were about 75% ANF with a quarter of WSG ancestry. And from this mix, the Kordowe was born. And the descendants of the Kordaware cultures gave birth to Italic, Celtic, Germanic, Baltoslavic, and the Rani languages and peoples. And, you know, the, basically the majority of Indo-European languages and cultures and peoples today descend from uh, this people. So you can see uh, Western Steppe Herders plus uh, this globulin, this is a globulin for, uh reconstructional EEF for short, created the Kordaware. Now, here's what the average uh, corded ware would have looked like, like this. And the, this corded Mediterranean phenotype would have been uh, extinct uh, soon after the corded aware evolved um, and they evolved into this corded norded phenotype now majority of these corded aware people were not blonde hair blue eyed and the ones that would have had blonde hair either would have had it when they were younger or the elites that had it and it would have been like dark blonde or even like light brown so most of them would have looked like this but with brown eyes very similar to the Iranian phenotype which is morphologically close to the corded uh, norded phenotype so you can see here the Cordaware, uh, I modeled them with a Hvalinsk Neolithic for the Western Sub Herder ancestry. And the Western Europe pre BA is the EEF ancestry. So you can see they had some more Cox on the Gather ancestry with some increased ancestry with some other populations that they mixed with. Now, here's some dark Cordaware examples, which is what majority of the corded wear would have looked like. And an important part of phenotyping is that pigmentation is not really the most important 95% of the time, but the morphology. So you can see here, this is what majority of them would have looked like. And these are all 100% European people. This woman, as far as I know, is 100% Germanic. Aldrich is an Anglo-Saxon or Germanic surname. Uh, this is Slovak a football, football player, Jakub Romada. And this is a Polish politician, Janusz korwin -Mikke. This is what majority of the court of wear would have looked like. They really did not have blonde hair. It was very, very small, them, and, if, and it was the, the elites. It was probably like 5% or 10% at most of them. Here's a PCA chart I made of comparing all these populations. You can see that the a &E had some affinities to these uh, East Asians and Native Americans, and the Yamnaya would have been in between uh, these uh, EHG and CHG people. And here's some other populations I modeled here. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my analysis of the Proto Indo Europeans. You're free to request any other peoples, I'd be happy to review them. Thanks for watching.